Hello everyone. It's that time again where everyone has to talk about Starship Troopers and people with a literal surface level reading comprehension come out and say that Starship Troopers is fascist. It is not fascist. If you want a full scale breakdown in one of the best YouTube videos I think I've ever seen, please go and watch Sargon of Akkad's Politics of Starship Troopers video. It is the best video on the platform when it comes to dissecting the politics of a film and absolutely refutes the idea that Starship Troopers is a fascist society. And I'm going to be expanding on the arguments I've been having over the past three days about this film because I absolutely love the film and I would love to see real world politics reflect those in Starship Troopers. Because I don't think I've seen a film show a more free society. I don't think I've seen a film that shows you the ideals of duty and sacrifice for your fellow man. And the hero's journey that Rico goes through is just sublime. It is a great film and Paul Verhoeven did not understand what he made. But well, I suppose I should get into detail about this entire episode. So last Thursday, a Twitter thread went viral by this account called Isaac Young. And he says, why the first Starship Troopers movie failed as a parody, a thread. Watching the movie, it was clear the director was aiming for a campy over the top depiction of the Terran Federation. Perhaps not an outright mockery, but certainly a drastic departure from the serious novel. And that is true. That was indeed his intention. He was trying to satirise fascism and mock fascism with Starship Troopers. And the problem is, as we will go through, it completely falls flat on its face. There's no fascism in the film, but we'll get into that. And to basically summarise this entire thread, because I don't even think it's a great thread to describe what's wrong with the satire, it's effectively an argument all down to aesthetics. Uh, this tweet sums it up. This is not a face I can relate to, sympathise for, or even have a dialogue with. This screams to me, kill it with fire. Even if it didn't want to kill this thing, I would want it to be in orbit and far away from this creature. It's horrific and only a contrarian can argue against it. Which to me is a really bad argument on why it went viral because it, again, is just a surface level take of the film, which the film's a lot deeper than just the bugs are ugly and the humans are handsome. Because, and again, I'll get into much more detail about this, the bugs are just pure evil. And not just because they're ugly, they are pure evil because their first instinct is just to kill anything alien even if it's not a direct threat to them. So naturally, a bunch of leftists came out of the woodwork to effectively call this guy stupid, which, to be honest with you, even I think this guy's stupid. I just don't think he's wrong. But your average leftist would say something like this. The idea that Verhoeven is too subtle for some people is genuinely hilarious. Because the thing is, is that it's really ironic, yes. Paul Verhoeven was not subtle about anything in this film. And yet, simply because he says in interviews that he was trying to mock fascism, People take his word at that rather than actually watching the film and find out that regardless of what his intentions were, he actually ended up making a film about effectively anti-fascists. A society that is not authoritarian, a society that does not have a dictator. A society where the only thing people can actually cite that's in the film that is remotely fascist and actually consistent throughout the film is trench coats and some eagles both of which aren't even unique to fascism. So because I'm crazy, I decided to kick the hornet's nest as well as jump into the pit of vipers. The idea that Verhoeven wrote a scathing critique of fascism instead of a heroic war story for Starship Troopers is laughable, because it absolutely is. Fighting a war against an existential threat does not make you fascist. Having a dictatorship that is overtly authoritarian and allows for absolutely no dissent or for anything to exist outside the state is fascism and there is absolutely no evidence that Starship Troopers has that sort of thing. And obviously, after this initial tweet, the only reply people ever had was, oh, but he did do that. To which I just say, well, he didn't. There's nothing fascist in the film. And this is where all hell broke loose for me and my weekend. Not that I didn't enjoy it. I absolutely love throwing out the bait to leftists to make them show us just how stupid they are. The main thing people could cite to me after I said there is nothing fascist in the film was, as mentioned before, trench coats with an eagle symbol on his head. Like, for a start, if the first thing you are citing to me as the fascism of the film is clothing and the fact that they are using eagle insignias, then, again, I'm just going to laugh at you. For quite a few reasons. Firstly, I have no problem with people pointing out that, yes, the SS uniform did include a trench coat and it did include a hat, 
with an eagle symbol on it. That is true. There's an example on screen right now. You are very clever for pointing that out. Anyway, here's a picture of Douglas MacArthur in his military attire, as you can see. It includes a hat with an eagle symbol on it, and it also includes a trench coat. Now, if we're going to try and claim that America was fascist in World War II, there is just no point in continuing the conversation. You are literally so ill-informed on political ideologies and which countries were running what type of politics that it's just pointless going on because we have to effectively give you a 10 hour history lesson just to get you up to speed. And anyway, if that's not enough for you, here's also a picture of some Soviets in trench coats as part of their military attire. And yes, I have had to censor some dead bodies there. Okay, they don't have eagles on their hats, but they still have insignia on their hats. The point being is that this is some really standard military attire and, and the only way you can actually say, oh, it's, it's fascist is, is because they're wearing black in Starship Troopers. Like, I get it, he's trying to make them look like Nazis. That is true. But number one, that is such a surface level way of saying, look, they're fascist, that it's not even worth really rebuting to this level of detail. But secondly, again, this has been true for every country. Every country has trench coats as part of the uniform in some way. Every country has hats with insignia on it as military attire in some way. You're not Nazi just because you have these things. So anyway, this bit alone probably burns down about 80% of the replies I got over the last three days, which was literally just the picture of Neil Patrick Harris in a trench coat. But your standard reply to me pointing out that Nazism was a little bit more than just trench coats and eagles was people just saying, oh, well, it symbolizes Nazism, which as I've already gone through, isn't the case. But again, if your very first and main citation of he was making fun of Nazism is, oh, they're wearing trench coats and have eagles as their symbols. A again, it it's just symbolism. It's not anything deeper than that. It's not literally nothing deeper than a surface level reading of the film. I mean, take American History X, for example. When people say that that is a film about how racism is bad, it there's actually a pretty clear scene that racism is quite clearly happening in the film. This isn't just like all oh, the, the symbols of him with a Nazi tattoo. No, no, it's not just that. He's also curb stomping a black guy. You know, the, the director and the writer and everyone involved in the film, they actually put effort in to make this character actually, you know, be a racist and show the issues with racism. My entire point of when it comes to Starship Troopers being a riff and a parody and a satire of fascism is that you actually need to have these sorts of things in the film for it to actually do that. And if all it is is eagles and trench coats, you haven't done that at all. What you have done is, and I even hesitate to say this because it is literally once in the film when Neil Patrick Harris wears it, but it's you trying to give it a fascist paint job. And as I say, it's in one or two scenes anyway. So it's pretty nuts to try and claim that the entire film is a parody of fascism when all you can literally cite is one costume design in one scene. And I suppose to be fair, there were people also pointing out that they had flags with eagles on it and, uh, oh, apparently this was a Nazi flag. So just have a good look at this flag with an eagle in it, with blue and green and, you know, a circle with some lines going off it. Now, I understand what they are trying to say here, and Via Hoven does say this in interviews, that this was a Nazi flag. The thing is, is that it looks absolutely nothing like the Nazi flag. It is pretty clear that this flag is trying to riff and be a parody of the war ensign of Germany. The problem is, is that it's done such a bad job of it that I don't think anyone would be trying to claim that this is the flag it was ripping off if Verhoeven didn't say in every interview that he was trying to parody fascism. Because the symbolism of an eagle is so widespread in all countries that it is absolutely nonsense to try and use that as a symbol of your riff off fascism. Here's a picture of a flag of the French Empire. Big eagle in the middle. Looks far more like the Starship Troopers flag than the Nazi flag ever does. Here's, a, here's another example of a flag with an eagle in the middle of it. Oh, it's Mexico. Uh, it, <laughs> is Mexico a, uh, a fascist state leftist? Do we think Mexico is fascist? No, I don't think so. My point yet again being that, yes, I get that Verhoeven is trying to riff off the eagle symbolism in Nazi Germany, but again, that doesn't work because pretty much every country has an eagle symbol somewhere in it. Obvious examples are France, America, pre and post Nazi Germany, Moldova, Albania, Mexico, apparently. If you're going to rip on fascism, maybe actually use some fascist symbols. And if you think the swastika is too on the nose, well, Verhoeven 
basically said he didn't care if he was too on the nose anyway, so I don't know why he'd say that. But there's nothing stopping you from using a sci-fi version of the fasces, which is an ancient Roman symbol, which is effectively just a bunch of sticks of wood tied together with an axe attached to it. So what the fascists use for a fascist symbol? I don't know why if you're going to riff on fascism and use symbolism of it, you don't use the unique fascist symbols. All I'm trying to say here is that this is the pretty obvious point of contention in that Paul Verhoeven didn't understand what he was satirising. Because again, even with the symbolism, it doesn't work for fascism. Because the symbolism he is using is so universal, it's absolutely pointless to try and say that it is unique to fascism. So given that the symbolism argument and the they wear trench coats and have eagles argument falls flat on its face, under any sort of scrutiny, I think it's time we move on. The next thing most people cite is Paul Verhoeven himself effectively saying that he made a perfect fascist world that was supposed to be the parody. In a 2014 interview with The Adam Carolla Show, Michael Ironside, Scanners who played the militant officer in Starship Troopers said that he asked Verhoeven why he was making a right-wing fascist movie. So that Verhoeven told him, if I tell the world that a right-wing fascist way of doing things doesn't work, no one will listen to me. And I think he needs to look a bit deeper and realise the reason for that is, is that everyone already agrees that a right-wing fascist way of running the world doesn't work because at most it lasts a decade because it got absolutely destroyed in a war. So I'm going to make a perfect fascist world. Everyone is beautiful, everything is shiny, everything has big guns and fancy ships, but it's only good for killing effing bugs. And there are plenty of other people who were citing different things about Verhoeven saying that he was making a parody or satire of fascism that, you know, we get the idea. I don't need to cite every single article he's been in. My whole point is that, but he didn't put anything fascist in there. I mean, even here in his examples of things being the perfect fascist world, it's that everyone is beautiful, okay? That's not true, by the way. Everything is shiny. I guess that's kind of true, apart from, you know, when the bugs destroyed Buenos Aires. Everything has big guns. Not everything. The school didn't have any guns whatsoever. There were fancy ships. Well, <laughs> I don't see again how that's fascism. And the only thing it's good for is killing bugs. Again, that's not true either. Everything Paul Verhoeven is describing here either isn't actually fascism or isn't in the film. And if it's not in interviews and people are citing the DVD commentary, I think one of my favourite tweets about this was someone who said, I will forever love the DVD commentary where Verhoeven is talking to viewers like they are children who miss the point of the movie. If you see something in this dressed like a Nazi, that was done on purpose because we are saying these people are bad, bad, bad. Again, the point's not gone over people's heads. People are just reading into the film a little bit more than surface level. But let's hear what Verhoeven has to say. Yeah, they're propaganda films from the uh, American propaganda films. Um... I, I mean, I absolutely love to see it already. O already the tone is having to change from, oh, sorry, we were riffing off non-fascist propaganda films. So again, even when it comes to the aesthetic of all these things, even when it comes to what they actually took inspiration from, again, it's not fascist. Effectively what he's tried to do is make a utopia America, put someone in a trench coat and say they're fascist. It's not working for right-wingers that don't see everyone to the right of Mao as a fascist because, again, we can see everything he's put in the film. Like, again, I'm going to go into this in more detail than I probably need to, but already if he's saying we took American propaganda, then already he's not making a parody of fascism because America ain't fascist. And of, of course, there is also a clearly a disguised um, uh, uh, statement about propaganda films of the Third Reich. So we were inspired by American propaganda films here, presumably from World War II. And, uh, and from there, we also put in some hidden messages about the Third Reich. In other words, th there were Nazi propaganda film secret messages within there. Well, I would love to hear more detail about that because I have no idea what you're talking about. All I think you're saying here is that all propaganda films to do with war are inherently fascist because I don't like them. I, unironically, I think that's what you're saying. In fact, it's saying, of course, that this fascist propaganda that is kind of apparent in the movie should be really read, at least uh, that's how we meant it. Oh, so again, this is Paul Verhoeven effectively saying it is fascist propaganda because that's how we intended it. But, I, I mean, this is a thing called Mauler's Law, where in a video essay, and I suppose you can call director's commentary a video essay, people will put in visuals that directly oppose what the video essayist is saying. And here, 
This was Paul Verhoeven saying during the opening reel where they are showing the disaster that was Klandathu that this was intended to riff off fascist propaganda. One thing fascist propaganda never, ever did was even show any military disasters within the Third Reich. They never did that. This alone shows Paul Verhoeven has no idea what he's talking about. He literally just thinks propaganda equals fascist. Problem is, if you make the propaganda very, very honest and don't actually mislead the audience and actually show, oh look, war is actually hell, then you have made the direct opposite of fascist propaganda while he's saying that's what he intended to do. And that's what he did, actually, before he said that's what he intended to do. Mauler's Law. Complete Mauler's Law. The visual is completely contradicting what Paul Verhoeven is saying in the director's commentary. I don't think I could give you a more perfect example of that law. Should be read as something that is not good. So whenever you see something that you think is fascist, you should know that the makers coincide with your opinion, thinking that it is not good. Yes, but here's the problem, Paul Verhoeven. The only thing that people can actually cite that is actually in the film and not just a made-up plot point that they're making up, such as a false flag thing that I'll get into, then I'm not actually seeing anything fascist. This is people's thing. It's like, yeah, I get I get it. You tried to make a fascist society. The problem is you completely screwed it up. The only people that are saying that you actually made a fascist film are the media literacy crowd, who apparently media literacy literally just means listen to what the director intended, and that's what the film is. If you said that this film was about a communist utopia, I think they'd believe you, because I don't think these people think. That is not a good statement, and this is not good politics, and if you see a black uniform, you should also know, bad, bad, bad. You know, it's very simple. This is the thing. What is he citing as fascist in the film? Black uniforms. That is it. This one scene of Neil Patrick Harris in a black uniform... That means the whole film is showing a fascist society. That is what Paul Verhoeven is saying. If that's what Paul Verhoeven thinks fascism is, I don't know what to tell you. The man doesn't understand any political theory. Anyway, at this point, I think I've proved that Paul Verhoeven doesn't know what fascism is, so I'll move on. When I point out that there is nothing fascist in the film, I've had people asking me to define fascism. So I decided to quote Mussolini. Everything within the state, nothing outside the state. It is your very, very basic one sentence, this is what fascism is. The almighty ethical state where nothing can exist outside of it. And the amount of people that told me I was wrong and that's not what fascism is, is insane. This is a direct quote from Mussolini, the literal founder of Italian fascism, telling people what fascism is, and apparently I'm wrong for defining it in a way fascists themselves are defining their own political philosophy. But more honest people were delving deeper, which is fair enough, asking, do non-state perspectives appear anywhere in the movie? And then there was a weird claim of Rico's parents are implied to have ties to the state with suggested potential influence over where he is posted. So here is the scene where Rico is talking to his dad. Have you lost your mind? I'd rather take 10 lashes in public square than see you ruin your life. This is a clearly a man with uh, ties to the government and the military. A man who thinks that joining them is ruining your life. Who gave you this idea? It's a teacher, isn't it? it? should be a law against using a school as a recruiting station. I don't know why people have claimed that it sounds like Rico's father has connections to the military or the government when he is quite clearly an open dissident of both. He clearly doesn't like both. Yet he is still a very rich and wealthy man with clear influence over Harvard, which, as far as I'm concerned, no reference is made to Harvard being part and parcel of the military or government. In fact, if it is an alternative to the military, we can probably assume that it's an alternative to the government and not part of it. This is part of my thesis in this video. Leftists will be given all sorts of references to the text. I will tell them literally what the film says, and they will just make up stuff about the film in their head. This is a perfect example. Rico's father clearly doesn't have any ties to the government or military, yet they will just say he does. Why? Because they don't know what they're talking about and they need, they need the Federation to be evil when it's not. You wanted to see the galaxy? How about a trip to the Outer Rings? Zegama Beach. This, by the way, is what this particular leftist thought was his father swaying where he would be in the military. 
No, he's offering him a bribe in terms of a holiday or a vacation if you're American. No, he's trying to bribe him to get away from the military, not try and influence where he goes in the military. And if he was trying to influence where he goes, do you really think he'd end up on Klandathu, in the front lines of the military, where he gets stabbed through the stomach? No, I don't think so. Anyway, the next big point that people decided to make was that, oh, didn't you know in Starship Troopers, they uh, they torture a bug. Yeah, my favourite part of Starship Troopers Discord is that they'll watch the scene of a military scientist torturing and killing an intelligent life form. Again, the bug itself isn't intelligent. The brain bug is the intelligent part. Whose territory we invaded. Mm, we didn't. The Mormon extremists did. And they went to an area of what they thought was virgin land. And oh, wouldn't you know, the bugs are expanding and kill everything in their way. And it's clearly screaming in agony. Well, it would do, it's dying, and still not get that Starship Troopers is a satire of fascism. The problem is here is that you are being asked to try and sympathise with a bug that is at the total will of the brain bugs who want it to sacrifice itself to kill everybody in that room. Bugs literally do not have individual identity. They literally do not understand the concept of being an individual. It has to do everything that the brain bug orders it to do. The brain bugs are in a state of total war. They want all humans eradicated, that is why they sent a meteorite to destroy 8 million people on Buenos Aires. But if you actually look at the clip of the scene, you can clearly see that it is writhing around in agony after it gets shot, but before that, it is trying to break out of the cage and kill everyone. This life form itself isn't intelligent, it's only intelligent when it's part of the hive, and the hive's in a state of trying to eradicate humans. You simply cannot sympathise with that unless you are brain dead. Again, if this bug was a person, then fair enough. We shouldn't be throwing people behind bars and just shooting them to see what'll happen and decide what the best way to kill someone is. That would obviously be evil. But these are non-humans, and they are non-humans that are even worse, trying to eradicate every human alive. The, uh, the theme doesn't quite work here. The theme you think that the film was intending doesn't work when you actually watch the film. But on the theme of people just making complete guff up about the film... It... There are replies that are fairly popular that literally do just make up things about the film because someone replied to this tweet saying, the bug sent a meteor at human planets, what's your point? In other words, these bugs are trying to eradicate the human species, what are we supposed to do? And someone replies, oh, if you watch the movie, it shows clear as day that humans settled on Klandathu without even bothering to check if it was inhabited. The bugs retaliated to defend their territory. Now... Here's what actually happened. Late, they realised that Dantana had already been chosen by other colonists. Yeah, clear as day in the film. Not Klandathu. They didn't settle on Klandathu at all. And they actually knew where the bug space was because they had an exclusion zone. And as the film clearly states, these Mormon extremists ignored that warning, went there anyway, and yes, the bugs actually had made it onto Dantana first, and therefore they just ripped them to shreds. Like, this is not the actions of a peace-loving species, a species that wants to get through life with diplomacy. It doesn't want peace. It wants complete eradication of humans. That's why the first thing they do when they see a foreign colony on a planet that they're on, they, they don't say, oh, please go away. You know, this is our planet. You know, you, you can go away. We don't want you on this planet. No, they don't say that. They don't say anything, in fact. They just kill them. Like, you can communicate warnings of go away or you'll die before you actually just massacre an entire community of Mormons. Mormons who, by the way, are uber pacifists as well. And by the way, the fact that they can make a colony while completely ignoring the state's warning, that is another example that this isn't fascism. Fascists would not let them do that. They would say, no, we said don't go there. You are not going there, otherwise we will jail you. No, nope, the Federation just let them go. Not fascist. Anyway, the biggest lie that kept cropping up was the asteroid attack being a false flag. And I think the most honest person to actually talk about this was someone who also added a little bit extra saying, if it wasn't a false flag, the bug shot a Hail Mary asteroid across the Milky Way. I don't know why you call it the Milky Galaxy, it's the Milky Way. To a planet that is covered 70% by water and there's a few logistical issues with it. Well... On the logistical issue side of things, yes, Klendathu is on the other side of the galaxy. Which a lot of people took as a, oh look, the bugs are miles away, they can't do anything, but 
again, when it comes to the logistics of firing an asteroid across the galaxy, well, the humans can get to the other side of the galaxy too. And if we actually listen to the logistics of how they fired the asteroid... The meteor was shot out of orbit by bug plasma that derived from Clendathu. We obviously see plasma bugs in the film and even the Starship Troopers Wikipedia explains that these bugs have enormous abdomens which swell up and launch a plasma burst into orbit. And this burst is powerful enough to deflect asteroids or slice capital ships in two. In other words, they are very powerful beings and they are thought to be the way that they also get from planet to planet. Now the point of me bringing this up is that when I obviously point all these things out, effectively what I'm told is that, oh, well, the reels are propaganda, you idiot. Don't you know that propaganda means that they're trying to mislead people? And here's my big retort to that. Out of every single reel where we can actually verify the facts, there isn't any misleading, there aren't any lies. The most you can kind of say is that it's biased, but even then, I think they are so unbiased in the facts, it's actually, no, the opposite. I don't think we should actually call these propaganda reels. I think we should call these information reels. There is that little propaganda going on. And I'm a guy who thinks that all art is propaganda, but not all propaganda is art. You know, I'm saying this about the reels, and this isn't just because I love the Starship Troopers society. This is because I literally can't find a single lie that they tell. So what I'm just going to touch upon is the Clandathra assault. They actually have live footage of the invasion, and everything that happens in this we can tell isn't edited at all because we see the actual scene where they attack them from Rico's perspective later on. We can even see them filming the footage live. They don't lie about any of this. It's just a total disaster. They go in, it's a disaster. They don't even try and hide the live footage or try and cut it off. They just show the whole impact of war. And not only would fascists not do that, they would only show, oh, look at all our victories, nothing bad ever happens. But as I say, this is showing that the reels aren't propaganda. It, there's nothing misleading here. And again, I'll go through more examples. Anyway, next up we have the reel on Buenos Aires and it's just total destruction. And in fact, the reel says, Buenos Aires has been wiped off the earth. We know this is without a doubt true because literally two minutes before this, we see Rico talking to his parents as the meteor is striking. They look up and say, oh, I don't know what that is. And then he loses communication. Again, nothing about what we can verify here is a lie. But I think the biggest tell that the reels are less propaganda and more pure information reels is when they are, again, pointing out that in the Battle of Klandathu, it was a complete disaster. They just have a death toll up on the screen, 10,000 dead. Again, I don't I don't see a reason this is a lie. We obviously can't verify that, but clearly a lot of people died. And not only that, they show military leaders admitting pure incompetence. Fleet officials admit they underestimated the arachnid's defensive capability. And then the military officials are being replaced for being incompetent. That didn't happen in fascist society, and there is no way if you had an authoritarian system you would let people know that this is what happened. Either that Kondathu was a disaster, or that there was disasters going up in the upper echelons of the military. You simply would not let people know that, because you need to have this whole veneer of complete control, and keep the public under the illusion that the state is all-knowing. That's not in Starship Troopers. So again, I don't think it was a false flag, because nowhere in the reels do they actually lie anywhere, and not only that, they're actually telling more truth than they actually need to for it to be propaganda. It's not biased, it's not misleading, and in fact if we go into it, there is, they are clear in these reels that they are perfectly happy to show that there is dissent. <laughs> no fascist state would ever do that. Firstly there's the debate between the two scientists between if the bugs are mindless or not. There is. Again, your fascist society wouldn't be this open and honest about its internal debate at the top of the hierarchy. But not only that, even the news reporters themselves, it's like being in a liberal democracy, unironically. They are giving stupid alternatives to the obvious facts of the matter. Here is a news reporter saying there are some idiots who think that we enraged the bugs because of the Mormons that landed on one of their planets that they were colonizing, by the way. Some say the bugs were provoked by the intrusion of humans into their natural habitat, that a live and let live policy is preferable to war with the bugs. Let me <laughs> it's like, can you see what I mean? What part of any of that is fascist? I, fascist propaganda would not have 
anything remotely like maybe lots let's not invade the Sudeten land and poke the bear that is Great Britain that currently has a massive empire. They wouldn't allow for the sense of, oh, I don't think the military should be constantly expanding in these expansionist fascist states. No, they are open about dissent. This is the direct opposite of authoritarianism. You don't need to be involved in the government or the military to make wealth, as we see from Rico's father, and there seems to be much dissent absolutely everywhere in the society. That's kind of two big pillars of fascism that have just crumbled under their own weight of things that are actually in the film. I, the point I'm trying to get across here is that leftists are idiots. They, like, they watched the film and thought, oh, Paul Verhoeven said it was fascist, I guess it is. And then when they're pushed on what's fascist about it, they can't actually give you anything apart from a black trench coat, and then everything else they literally just make up. It's not surprising, given that Paul Verhoeven didn't even read Starship Troopers, that he couldn't satirise it properly or even make the society fascist. All he could do was try and give it a fascist paint job, but people with brains are seeing right past that. But honestly, this could be a video in and of itself, so I am just going to slightly touch upon this. When it comes to Starship Troopers reels, I have had people say to me, the recruitment videos are nods to Nazi propaganda. They snipped I'm doing my part straight from Triumph of the Will, Society is militaristic because democracy drove society to the brink of collapse. Perhaps the most obvious reframing of a violent coup. So when it comes to Radchek's whole speech, I, I was going to cover it, but as I said at the beginning, you should have watched Sargon's video by now. It's explained way better in there. I'm not even going to touch upon it. I'm going to touch upon the reference to Triumph of the Will because I'm literally just going to leave it on in the background for now. This is the first part that I could find on YouTube. This is literally the first, more than a tenth of the Triumph of the Will, and obviously when you get past all this introductory stage, you will notice that it's pretty much ten straight minutes of just Hitler. Of people loving the dictator, the dictator going through all the streets, having people wave and salute at him, having him go up on a balcony and give a speech and whatever. People loving Hitler is literally the first ten minutes. So, if we are snipping straight from Triumph of the Will, what I am saying is, is that what you should probably be doing is having a dictator in your film. Because in Starship Troopers there isn't a dictator. There isn't a dictator at all, and there can't be a dictator because there wasn't a dictator in the books and they didn't know how to riff off that. So they just didn't have it. And then, yet again, this is a third big pillar of fascism, having an almighty dictator that isn't in Starship Troopers. Again, these people don't know what fascism is, and absolutely every main part of fascism that you need to have a fascist state is just missing. It's just not there. Is there anything remotely like in Starship Troopers? Anything like this? Is there anyone effectively loving the dictator to a ridiculous degree? Even even when it comes to the military, even when it comes to like the military doing the outreach programs with kids and then they kill bugs. I'd probably say that's the most like it, but again, the bugs killed eight million people, you know? It's a pretty clear-cut case of the bugs are just pure evil and need to be destroyed. When it comes to the propaganda in Triumph of the Will, I mean, for a start, I just want to say, this is really, really boring. But look at the screen now. Oh, look, it's big Nazi parades with, uh, oh, there's lots of people. There's lots of Nazi regalia. This is possibly even a book burning. They have tiki torches anyway. Nothing even remotely ritualistic like this when it comes to, <laughs> that was a Heil Hitler thing, when it comes to Starship Troopers. No hail the almighty dictator, no dictator at all from what we can see, and even when it comes to the military, even the military's own network is open about dissent, is open about people criticising the military. None of that in Triumph of the Will. To invoke Triumph of the Will when it comes to Starship Troopers is ridiculous, they are nothing alike. Which is why in the director's commentary, Verhoeven said this. Yeah, they're propaganda films from the uh, uh, American propaganda films. Um... So saying anything is ripped from Triumph of the Will is just wrong, because Paul Verhoeven didn't rip off it. He ripped off the American propaganda films. But the thing is, is that, you know, on screen now, this is a World War II propaganda film about French cadets. Like, it, it's very similar. He didn't rip off any particular propaganda. It was literally just standard army propaganda, which is the only part you can probably say is biased because of course it's pro-military. They're trying to get people recruited, but you can tell the similarities between this type of propaganda and Starship Troopers. So what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not specifically fascist. It is militaristic at best. And you know what? 
Of course it is. It's a war film. Oh yeah, and now this is reminding me that people think because there is a kid in this propaganda film, that means that they were recruiting child soldiers. I just know there's nothing in the film that supports that. They seem to ignore the fact that the reason the soldiers are laughing in this propaganda reel is because it's obvious that the kid is too young to actually enlist. So when he says, I'm doing my part, the joke is, is that he can't. That's why they're laughing. The other reference they have is this picture of particularly the young soldiers who, you know, it's reference that they come straight out of boot camp. What that means is that they've done about half a year of training and they've come in straight away after they've turned 18. That's all that's implying. There is literally one person here who looks under the age of 18. That doesn't mean he's under 18. There are plenty of 18 year olds that look under 18. So why we have these things called IDs so that we can buy alcohol. Anyway, we're just over half an hour in. So that is the end of me taking the serious points to heart. And now it's time to get into some of the funny highlights that I have seen from this entire past three days. The first example is someone saying that their sports games are just a more violent version of American football. Why do you think it was made that way, implying that it's fascist because there is violence? Well, I guess from this logic, we have to call all six nations that partake in the Rugby Six Nations Cup that they are all fascist. That's what, England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, France and Italy. They're all fascist countries, according to this guy, because it's a more violent version of American football. Like, it, like the reach some people are getting to after I refute their arguments is insane. There were more of the obvious, in Starship Troopers novel, Juan Rico calls Tagalog his native language. He's not from Buenos Aires, but it still gets destroyed. But can you think of any real-world reasons it suits the movie to change Ibanez, Rico, Flores and Carl Jenkins into Aryan Argentinans. Again, missing the point that, no, everyone understands he was trying to make it out that everyone's fascist by making them blonde haired and blue eyed, even though, again, there are black people in the military and there's no racism or sexism throughout the society. People, people get that he was trying to say everyone's fascist because everyone looks great and there's some iconography that is shared between all sorts of cultures and not just fascism. People are saying you're an idiot if you think that alone makes it a fascist society, and yet they will still push it. But really, I think the absolute funniest tweet I saw in the whole three days I've been arguing this has to be this one. Here's a link to help you with some actually peer-reviewed and researched pieces. Hope it helps, and if it doesn't, I'm not falling for that hot take. That's clearly someone with a fetish for getting yelled at or refuse to participate in that kind of perversion. The thing is, is that if I'm yelled at by people who are openly anti-human, I find that hilarious. None of this was bait. I was completely serious that Starship Troopers is not a film about fascists, and I am deadly serious that I know and understand more about the film than the actual director when it comes to its politics, because the director clearly doesn't understand its own politics. I know he grew up in Nazi-occupied Netherlands, but he was five at the time, and I think he would be doing a little bit more than putting people in trench coats and saying, yeah, the propaganda reels are fascist, if he was actually going to do anything serious with his critique of fascism. Anyway, this link takes you to a Google Scholar search for Starship Troopers and Nazism, and there's actually a lot more than you'd think, and it unironically makes me think that academia actually needs to just be brought to its heels and reconstructed from the bottom up. Because, honestly, we're just going to go through one example here. This one is called The Intergalactic Final Solution, Nazism and Genocide in Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers. And believe it or not, they're not referring to the bugs exterminating people as the Nazis here. In 1997, release of Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers generated controversy for its obvious Nazi imagery and ironic endorsement of a fascist future. Again, peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed doesn't mean true. Peer-reviewed means that other people have read it and approved it for publishing. That's all it means. I, it doesn't mean that it's true or that in any way it's more correct than, say, my analysis. It just means that other experts are circle-jerking over it. Based on Robert Heinlein's equally controversial novel in which militarised Earth is engaged in a war of annihilation against a race of insects, again, completely leaving out the fact that the insects attacked Earth and the solar system first in the book, Verhoeven's film portrays a society that embraces the logic of extermination and uses Nazi language and signifies to express eliminationist rhetoric at every turn. Again, ignoring the fact that there is clear dissent in the film, there is open dialogue in the film, there is no dictator in the film, and ignoring the fact that, again, 
It was the bugs that attacked Earth first. Schools, the media, and the future military consistently invoke Nazi terminology and allusions to frame the conflict against the Arachnids. If you've ever wanted to see that, yes, in fact, the universities do literally just call everything they don't like Nazi, I think this is the best example of it, because I know this is just the abstract, but if I had access to the full article, I would love to see what they actually reference for this, because this guy could have just referenced anything from this article to me, but all he did was link to a search on Google Scholar, as if that's a clever thing to do. And it's ended up with one of the most embarrassing moments for academia I think I've ever seen in my life. From the blatant mimicry of Triumph of the Will, Again, I showed you the first 10 minutes of Triumph of the Will, and the only thing that was similar is that they both have a military. Like, there's no dictator, there's no citizens in the streets saluting a dictator or even saluting the army. We barely see citizens. The only ones we really see are ones that want the bugs dead because they destroyed their home and killed their family. I mean, I, re I really could do a whole video on here is Triumph of the Will, and here is anything that relates in any way to Reel's in Starship Troopers, because again, they've got the detail wrong. Paul Verhoeven didn't copy Triumph of the Will. Paul Verhoeven copied American propaganda films and tried to put a fascist spin on it, but he never did. But today isn't the video for that. I'm just saying that from everything I've seen so far of Triumph of the Will, and I probably watched about half of it, I can't see the similarities. There was also the twisted use of Frank Capra's Why We Fight series, which, okay, I, I've not seen that, but already there was actually a reel that said, why we fight, and it was because the bugs killed 8 million people. Verhoeven cleverly mixes Nazi imagery, a trench coat, with the patriotic fervour promoted in American propaganda films from the Second World War. I, I have no doubt he did that. Again, I used European propaganda films, and I wouldn't be shocked if the American ones were similar to that. Verhoeven attempts to seduce the audience into accepting and even cheering for genocide on a galactic scale, the irony of this approach was lost on most of the audience and reviewers. Well, that's probably because it's not there. Again, the references that are in this abstract are wrong. The only one that I will accept is correct is that, yes, Frank Capra's Why We Fight series probably was inspiration for the reels. Triumph of the Will, though, as I say, nothing similar, apart from the fact they both have an army. But if we're being that reductive, we may as well not have the conversation in the first place. So, yes, even peer-reviewed articles who are supposed to be the experts with the big brains are getting the most basic facts of the film wrong. And this, unironically, is entirely the same when it comes to actual conversations about real life rather than just media analysis. You can point out all the facts and figures to these people all you want, they will ignore it because they're ideologically possessed and they have this positive feedback loop of just, I'll say something left wing, oh look at that, it gets reinforced, I'm told I'm a good person, I'm told, oh yeah that's so true queen. And so they'll just keep saying it more and more and more and more until we've ended up in a situation where in real life Hamas terrorists have literally killed over a thousand Israelis, raped and kidnapped others, and all of a sudden Israel is the bad guy for retaliating against that terrorist attack. Like, the same people who were saying, oh, the bugs are actually, they didn't do nothing, it was the humans that are evil and are lying about all this, they are saying the same thing about Hamas and Israel. And, and these same people are trying to defend pirates who are attacking completely innocent civilian ships in the Red Sea, they're completely defending them. They're people like Hassan Piker, who interviewed an actual pirate and ended up just asking him, oh, do you watch anime? Oh yeah, America's evil. These people are not serious people. They are not people that have any interest in having an honest dialogue about these things. The reason that I put forward an honest dialogue is because, as we see, they say the most hilarious stuff about it, which, when it comes to media analysis, is actually just really, really funny. When it comes to real life things, when it gets really serious, it just gets sad. But they don't realise that they are just... They've got massive blinkers on and can't see the woods for the trees, and they just think, oh, an expert said it, so it must be true. When the reality of the situation is that throughout time, it's actually quite rare that the experts have been correct on probably a majority of things. My best example is just look at medicine in the 19th century, and even before that. You know, experts on these things aren't necessarily correct on them, but you would hope that they are the best people to give the most accurate analysis. And it's actually completely the other way around these days. Some idiot like Carl Benjamin, he can just make an entire video on the politics of Starship Troopers and use every reference in the film that he can find to support that it is actually 
a Chad liberal democracy where there's not universal suffrage. Instead, you have to prove that you are willing to sacrifice your life for the good of the people to earn that. And that ends up becoming a much, much better and more insightful analysis into Starship Troopers than peer-reviewed articles. Like, all this weekend has done is showed me that leftists hate people and will literally support and play apologia for literal space aliens that are genocidal against people. That is all I have learned this weekend. So, with that, that is everything I had for you today. <laughs> I really do hope you enjoyed it because I did actually enjoy my entire weekend arguing with idiots and getting together the best arguments that they had within this video. There is no doubt that I have missed some. I had well over 50,000 notifications over this weekend. So obviously I can't go through everything, but luckily an awful lot of the arguments were the same. The only one off the top of my head I think I missed out on was that because the teacher said that the drone bugs were the perfect selfless member of society, that meant that they were fascist. When in reality, a bug that is completely self-sacrificing and doesn't consider itself an individual, yeah, that is a perfect ideal for a selfless member of society. That doesn't mean that we should have perfectly selfless members of society, though. And no one else in the film clearly thinks that. So, again, another pointless argument. Anyway, I could go on for hours here. So, with that, I'm going to end the video there. That's everything I had for you today. We are going to be having the other side of the hill on the Wellington Project tomorrow, of course. We are going to be on regional variations on Tail Features Channel Wednesday. And Laughing at the Guardian will be returning on Friday. So, please, go and check them all out and with that finally that is everything i had for you today so once again thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye